Hello and welcome to the second video in this little series talking about how to convert your Ranger T1 using the supplied kit from HeWing themselves and also putting inside the flight controller. Now this video is going to all be about the flight controller. Last time we installed all the electronics so all the hardware from the conversion kit is on here but we need to flash and set up the brain. Now the process I'm going to follow is broadly outlined here on the right hand of the slide. I'll put time codes down below so you can jump to that particular bit. Lots of it is going to be on the computer and it's all the kind of stuff that's documented both in the RD Pilot wiki and also on the Matech F405 VTOL website and pinout diagrams as well. But I need to say a massive thank you to people like Wind FPV who have blazed the trail with setting this up. And hopefully by the end of this video, the flight controller is going to be in a condition where we can do the final installation into the model itself with the connections for the power system and also plug in all the various servos and motors and everything else, do the final tweaks and it's going to be ready to fly. So we're going to follow the process as I've just covered in the introduction. However, I have pinned this thing and done all the soldering before we actually connect to the computer. I wouldn't recommend doing it this way. I'd recommend flashing the firmware onto the flight controller first. That way, if you accidentally find that the flight controller has an issue, you can return it and get a new one. Most people that sell flight controllers will not accept a flight controller that's already been soldered onto. So my top tip here is before you do this flashing bit we're about to do, do it before you solder all the bits on. That way it'll work a little bit better. So let's flash the firmware onto this. Now the first thing we need to do is to go on the computer. Now there is a whole section here. I'll put all these links down below of how you can uh, download the Ardu Pilot software and how you can use all these funky things to get into DFU mode and flash it and all this kind of stuff. I wouldn't do it that way. I would flash it with iNav. It's the way that I've done it on the other builds where I've put RD Pilot on these flight controllers. Now, the main reason for this is this thing is already supplied with iNav installed. We want to blow away the iNav configuration and install the RD Pilot setup. Now to get that, we need to go to this location here. Again, link down below, and we need to download this particular file, arduplane with bl.hex. We're going to save link as, and we'll stick it somewhere like just whack it on the desktop because that way we can get to it nice and easy. So with that being downloaded, the other two things you're going to need to get your hands on is iNav configurator. You can download it from this address. Again, this address is in the description. This is just going to be used to flash it. You could even use beta flight for this because we're just going to use it as a way to get the code onto the board. And the other thing we're going to need is mission planner. Mission planner is what we're going to use to set up the majority of the stuff. You can download the latest mission planner from here. If we click on this, it's actually going to download the MSI file, the Windows MSI that you can use to then install everything. I already have iNav Configurator installed on my machine and I already have Mission Planner on here as well. And now we also, thanks to this, have downloaded the firmware. So the first thing we need to do is to start iNav. Now with iNav ready to go, we need to plug the flight controller in. Now there is a little boot button here by the side of this white piece at the top. We're gonna to have to press that as we apply power. Now the way I would do it, and a top tip, is whenever you're plugging in something like a USB cable into a computer, plug the flight controller piece in first, and then plug the other end into the computer. It just saves some of the weird stuff that can occasionally happen, and it saves some of the wear and tear on this as well. So I'm going to press and hold the boot button which is here, a little bit tricky. You kind of have to catch it with your fingernail. And then I'm gonna plug the USB cable into the computer. And it's appeared as COM5 on the computer. Let's just turn off that beeper. We can turn it off with a switch here. It's appeared as COM5, that hasn't worked. So we'll unplug it from the computer. We'll hold the boot button. And we'll try that again, because what we want it to appear on the computer as, is as it's appeared here, DFU. That's what we want. If it doesn't appear as DFU, then what you need to do is download the Zadig tool and to use a video, I'll put a link down in the description to replace the driver so it appears as such. 
We're going to go into firmware flasher. We're going to make sure that full chip erased is selected and we're going to select firmware, load firmware local, and we're going to pick that file. We're going to open that. And then we're going to select flash firmware. It's going to erase the flight controller. And then what's going to happen is it's going to push the Ardu pilot firmware image onto the flight controller. And this isn't going to take too long. It's going to take a couple of minutes and then we'll have Ardu pilot on here. And then we finished with INAV configurator. So now it is successful, then it's going to reboot. And then we now have Ardu pilot on here and we can connect to it with Mission Planner. So here on the computer, we are about to use Mission Planner to go through and set up all the different pieces on the flight controller. However, you'll notice I've installed two things onto the flight controller. Now the flashing has been done. The first is the GPS. I've installed the GPS as per the INAV stuff here. So if we look at the Ardu plane wiring, we can see here that the GPS should be installed into these six pins, which is where I have plugged them into. And there's also the connections here onto the SBUS 4.5 and ground pins. Now I'm setting mine up here for SBUS, just for simplicity for the setup. However, you can set it up for CRSF. These are the options that you need to change. Uh, if you want to use SBUS, then you know what? It's actually ready to go out the box. Plugging SBUS in, and the GPS into these pins means that by default, with the parameter file we've just loaded, everything should work straight away. So let's plug in the flight controller and power it up and we'll connect and we'll have a look. I'll take you through all the things that we need to do. Once it's connected, just make sure we have the right COM port selected. It'll be whatever for yours. We're going to click on connect. Once it's connected, it'll get all the data across. Now we need to go through in the setup tab and we need to go through mandatory hardware and set up each of these in turn, just like we would do with any other Ardu pilot setup. First of all, I do accelerometer calibration, click on calibrate accelerometer and put the flight controller in the different positions on the desk as you are instructed. Just follow that same process as normal. Once you've done that, you can also put the board level and then click on calibrate level. And then that should be this piece done. Next thing to do is calibrate the compass. Now the compass should appear here at the top if you have installed it correctly and wired it up as I've just discussed. Make sure that it appears. Don't change anything up here. Do make sure that compass two and three are not enabled. Click on start. Hold the compass and the GPS unit in line with the flight controller with the two arrows on both units pointing in the same direction and just move it around. Keep moving until this line, a mag one completely fills up. When it does, then you've done that piece too. Next bit is radio calibration. Now for radio calibration, we need to set up the radio and bind it to the receiver as Aileron Elevator Throttle Rudder, or AETR, with Channel 5 as arming, Channel 6 as modes, and we'll change all that so it works. If you set that up, again, you don't have to change anything here in Mission Planner. So once you have that set up, and if you move the sticks on the radio, you can see everything moving here on the screen. Only thing to be aware of is that the pitch channel should be reversed, i.e. when the pitch stick is at the top of the radio, the value should be low and vice versa. Everything else should be as you'd expect. Click on calibrate radio, move the sticks to the edge positions, follow the instructions on screen. And when it's finished, the radio is calibrated as well. We're not going to do some of the others until we've done some more of the setup because some of the setup options that we need are going to be only there when we enable quad plane, which is the bit that allows us to do VTOL. So we're going to go into config and then we're going to go down to something called full parameter tree. Here in full parameter tree, over here where it says search on the right hand side, we can type in the different pieces. Now what we need to do is first of all, change the direction for the flight controller. Because the flight controller as it is, is kind of backwards for how we need to use it. We're actually gonna mount it switched around 180 degrees. So the back of the flight controller is the front because that makes sense the power connection is then coming out on the side that we need it. So we're gonna search for AHRS underscore orientation. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to set that value to four, which is your 180 degrees. The cool thing is, is that you kind of have this little help box on the screen that tells you what all these things do. Once it's four, hit enter and then click on right parameters. Do that after each change on the particular piece. That now means that when we go back into data and move the board, it's going to move in the correct orientation. So that's just flipped it round. Now, if we were going to be setting up CRSF, we would set the Serial 6 options and the Serial 6 board to follow what's on the website. However, as is SBUS in this particular instance, we're not going to bother with that. And also, you'll have noticed that the channels on the radio match the default because we have used the AETR orientation. If you haven't, to change that, then we can use something called RC Map, and this allows you to tell Mission Planner which order the channels are in. Now, channels five and six need to be set up as well. So we need to set RC5 option to 153. 153 is arm and disarmed. And once we again, once we've changed anything, make sure you hit right parameters. We also then need to change flight mode underscore CH, the flight mode channel to channel six. That's the one that we're going to use, of course, for the three flight modes. I've just set mine up for a three position switch, which is all you need to do. Now, by default, this is set up this firmware to have lots of auxiliary sensors enabled. So we need to disable all of those. First one we need to change is airspeed underscore type, ARSPD type, change to zero. That's going to disable it. We need to make sure that range finder landing is set to zero, which disables it because we don't have any range finders in the model. We also need to make sure that range finder type is zero as well. And then that means that it's absolutely sure that that's not happening. We also need to change log backend type to zero. That's just going to turn that off too. Log bit mask also needs setting to zero. And that just basically turns all this stuff off. We also need to turn off terrain enable. Hit enter, let's write all those parameters back. Remember to do this after each one. And the last one is to then do arming check. Now this value here is actually set by putting ticks in all of this stuff apart from logging available, which means that all isn't ticked as well. Once you've done all that, make sure that you write the parameters. That's a lot of the main grunt work done. Next thing to do then is to enable the quad plane setup. So on a new board, if we search for Q underscore, we're only going to get Q enable. So if I just search for that, Q enable by default is set to zero. You need to set that to one and write parameters and then I would disconnect and reconnect the flight controller or refresh your parameters. And then suddenly you'll have an awful lot of them. And these are all the things that we need to set up to set how everything is going to work. So very quickly, the ones we need to change are set Q frame class to seven, set Q frame type to zero, set Q tilt enable to be one, set Q tilt type to be two, and set Q tilt mask to be three, which basically means that only motors one and motors two, which are the front two motors, are the ones that have to be tilted. Set Q assist speed to minus one, essentially disable it. Set Q underscore M underscore PWM type to six. That's going to set it for D shot 600, which is what these ESCs are capable of. Set Q options to this value. And what you need to do is turn on all of these different pieces. So we want level transition, throttle land control, enable land reposition and complete transition or Q trans fails are selected. So we need to make sure that those things are all selected. And if they are, it'll give you that value. And again, make sure you're writing this stuff after each piece. So all we're doing here is we're just setting all of the different parameters so this is going to work. A couple more that we have to do for the quad plane stuff for this to work properly. We need to set Q fail trans for 10. This is the maximum time allowed for the forward transition. Set Q RTL mode to one. That's just going to enable it. Set the Q RTL altitude for 50 meters. It's going to be a nice safe altitude for it to come back, but you can set it higher if you want to. We need to set the Q rate down to 20 and the Q rate up to 80. 
and then we need to set the Q transition MS, which is the time to 5,000. Last one for this bit is to set the Q weather vane height management to 15 meters. That's all the stuff about weather vaning that I've covered in the other videos. It means that it's only really active uh, around the 15 meter mark. Once we've done that, make sure you write all your parameters and I would then power cycle the flight controller. And that's pretty much most of the quad plane stuff done. There is one extra few, couple of small things that we're going to do when we have the flight controller all wired up. Next thing to do then is back in setup, we can now go into servo output. And because quad plane is all set up and configured, we should now be able to pick the outputs and arrange it as it's here. So output one is motor two, output two is motor one, and just do them as is on here. Uh, mo output four can actually be disabled because to be honest, we don't want anything on output four. Note that we are using two aileron channels. So we are going to use two ailerons. We're gonna to have to modify that cable when we come to install the flight controller, but that gives us fine control over the middle positions of each of the control surfaces. But just copy this and set it up as I've shown. Next thing we need to do then is flight modes. Now the three position switch is going to give us flight modes one, four, and six. I'd select Q Loiter for flight mode one fly by wire A for flight mode four and flight mode six, set it for return to launch and then click on save modes. Now at this point, we are in a really good shape. We can do things like set the on-screen display layout. That is done via the config tab and then in onboard OSD. And then in here, you can decide and check how you want everything to work. If we wanted to set up the VTX for something like analog, then what we do is we would go into the full parameter tree and then we do things like search for VTX underscore enable. That's currently zero. We turn that to one and then that would allow us to set the options for serial four underscore protocol and then serial four options to half duplex only and the serial board rate to four for 4,800. And that would allow us to set it everything up. So we're in a pretty good state at the moment. We've gone through most of the stuff now that we need to do. This flight controller is pretty much ready to install into the body of the model and do the final bits of wiring. There are some extra little things that we're gonna to have to tweak, things like control surface movement, alignment, and also the alignment and movement of things like the tilt rotors as well. So join me next time where we'll complete that setup and we'll get this whole raft of electronics installed in the middle of the Ranger T1. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.